Hello and welcome back to Funeral DNA, the podcast that analyzes the unique components, trends, and innovations that make up the funeral industry, or as we call it, Funeral DNA. I'm Mike Davis. And I'm Ashley Solomon. And today we bring on Richard Martin from Scattering Ashes in the UK. Hi Richard, thank you for coming in today. Hi guys, thanks for inviting me. So Richard, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and how long have you been with Scattering Ashes? So, uh, well, it was... I was the founder, so uh, we've been going since uh, 2010. We started it off as a blog, uh, and then it sort of kind of built from there, really. So would you be able to tell us a little bit more about Scattering Ashes? So how did the company start? You mentioned that you were the founder, and sort of what was your vision? Okay, so it had... um, So I I started this... uh, I used to work for a long time uh, in the environment world and I worked for the government and um, and then I felt that perhaps I needed a change and what had happened I lost my dad when I was reasonably young I was 25 and and we scattered his ashes on the golf course Uh, he's where he played golf now it was it never felt quite right the the uh, the club didn't really make us feel very welcome The, the funeral directors didn't really guide us in how to do this they kind of left us to our own devices and the whole the whole process felt unsatisfactory to be honest with you and I thought well I can't be the only one that felt like this because when I thought about it most people when I say oh yeah yeah you know most people end up scattering ashes in the UK I know it's slightly different in Canada and the US and all that sort of thing most people scatter here so most people cremate here and most people scatter so I thought to myself I started um started doing a bit of research and and found that there was very little information even back in 2010 there was very little information people that didn't know uh, no guidance so i started just putting a little blog together and that focused on you know, where you could do this how you could do this the processes the things to consider and slowly we built from there and we built and we attached products and services to respond to what people are asking us for. Nice. Um, so can you um, briefly, you, you talk about products and services there. Um, can you briefly describe or break down the different ceremonial options that you guys have on your site or that your site offers? So we, it, the business is kind of t- two things. It's, it sells products, which is, you know, you, you, let's say you earn for the mantelpiece, which is not really required very much anymore. Uh, then you've got, we specialize in things for the water a lot as well. So a lot of people go out onto the water and so we sell urns that dissolve. And so we sell products like that for doing things with Then We sell products that for keepsakes. So one theory is that people like to scatter, but then they go, Oh, wait a minute. I didn't want all of uncle George out on the Cairngorm mountains or something. I wanted a little bit of him with me so that I can feel that connection because the ashes create, a connection a connection to a place a connection to a person so when you scatter you're kind of bonded with that place and you might not want all of that bond to be uh, out there over there you might want a little bit held back so and also you can have a little the family can have a little bit say you might have you might have cousins out in Canada and they might and they might want a bit you know so that though we put some in glass hearts and stuff like that so that's kind of like one element of it and the other side is referral services. So we've gone and found all these different uh, companies that do stuff with ashes. And a lot of it's boats. So we have a huge number of boats, uh, 70 different boats around locations around the UK. So that from the top of Scotland to the bottom pointy bit, Cornwall in the bottom bit and over to Ireland. And then we also do uh, stuff for the sky. So we have fireworks, we have biplanes we have a spitfire that we can use to scatter ashes and we have people that will take them into space in like these sort of customized weather balloons and we also have like a a reef off the south coast of the uk which then sort of forms a diving reef so people can go and dive and stuff like that so that's the kind of two sides of the service if that makes sense two sides of the business yeah so uh what would what would you say would be one of the most unique uh, scattering options that you've heard of or that you've helped facilitate for a family well one of the unique things about 
the products and services that we have the one that we sell uh, probably the most to canada us australia and and even uh even to norway and denmark is we sell our viking boat so we have a like a viking boat that's about a meter long or three 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 foot depending on you know which uh, metric you want to use and that can hold uh the, the weight of one person's ashes and then you set that uh afloat and you like that and then that combusts in over a period of time and then will gradually sink below the waves and i say we sell them everywhere people love them and it's sort of a kind of a unique uh it's sort of quite i don't know it's, it's a beautiful way to go out quite poignant and quite distinct you know absolutely so you'd mentioned earlier that when you lost your father it was um a much more difficult process to sort of understand the scattering scattering his ashes um, do you still find a lot of meaning in helping families, um, helping guide them into their decisions and helping give them the exact experience of, of saying goodbye? That's that's the kind of really the principal reason for being in the job is the meaning to it. And, you know, I get I, I get families every day that I'm able to help. And it's a real privilege, you know, a real privilege. And it it sort of it kind of transcends from being just going in the office and just pressing the button on the photocopier you know it's not like that it's not like that if we can put people and provide them a service a ceremony that they're after provide them choice and provide them some meaning and allow them to celebrate that person then well you can't argue that we can't ask for more than that really can you it's it's it's, it's brilliant to be honest with you do you have any um families that sort of stick out that you'd like to share a story of <laughs> it, it, the the uh the archetypal throwing ashes into the wind comes back to me people tell me this on a daily basis we have ones that miscalculate and end up in the water we have ones that fall down and injure themselves we have all sorts we've got we had a, one where they they put the uh the fishermen they they squeezed it back into a, a sort of a ball of uh fish bait and threw it back at the fish so they could get the fun and revenge you know it's like there's just some some beautiful uh like twists like that um and and we kind of cater for those who have with a bit of imagination and perhaps a little bit of a sense of humor and those who are on the tougher end of the spectrum where the death's too young you know and 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 the parting is really really hard i mean i think s some of what we do it's it's usually departed from the from the funeral so the funeral raw grief yeah absolutely you know and then they kind of wait with actually some people will know exactly what they want to do and some cultures they have to do it quickly but for others you know it could be six 12 months and that sort of the pain has not gone it's dissipated and changed and they're kind of looking for some bit more meaning they're looking to reflect on a life and i think that's kind of where we can help the most you know is there a, a lot of legal requirements or or like uh, red taping when it comes to scattering ashes in the UK? Like I know here, um, one instance that, that pops to the top of my mind, I'm a big sports fan. I remember the guy going into Wrigley Field um, at the baseball game and dumping his ashes in Chicago and being immediately hauled off by uh, security and banned for a lifetime, which they've actually rescinded the ban, I do believe. Uh, but I remember the baseball players getting a little freaky that they're having ashes dumped on them while they're standing in the outfield. Um, is there a lot of like legal red tape in the UK of where they can or can't spread ashes? No, no. I, I remember that story. And I read on that. I think I might, might have even blogged on it. I can't remember it's, um because it wasn't so long ago. And no, the, we're quite quite thankful here in the, in the UK. We we've got very relaxed laws. So as long as you've got the landowner's permission, then you're fine. Um, we kind of um, try and guide people to do it not just in terms of legally we ask people to do it conscientiously so don't pick a beach when it, on a bank holiday and and you know in the just be minded of your circumstances where you are because you'll want the privacy too so you just have to be conscious of where you're doing it and when now we have got places that specifically ban it so it's banned um 
It's funny because I'm going to talk about British geography, but Ben Nevis is a is a famous mountain in Scotland. So all the Scots, they love it. And they will go there and, you know, it's very, very significant uh, part of the culture. You know, it's like it's a big thing, Ben Nevis in the in Scottish culture. And a lot of people wanted their ashes scattered up there. But there was so much being scattered up there that the, the, the sodium and the calcium and the phosphorus, uh, phosphate, that they, they all kind of disturbed the ecosystem. So the, the people who managed the mountain said no more no more and then we also had um the author jane austen um her house was getting deluged people were nipping over the wall at night time and bunging the ashes in the rose beds and again they just said, said no this is just this is just too much and then we have also so i've done a survey quite a few years back of um, football grounds or soccer grounds as you might call them and um and there's a disparity on between clubs that used to let that let people scatter at the grounds and and those that don't and you know the culture around that really and and how clubs let fans memorialize it's quite fascinating different you know different aspects to it you know so how do clients find your company then are you affiliated with certain funeral homes or do they they, they just make their way to your website yeah so we pick up most of our business from google to be honest with you we uh we go to great lengths to sort of feed the google machine and provide you know good accurate information quickly so um that's kind of most we we, we do work with a funeral uh, directors in the uk and a couple in the states and then australia as well and uh but the, the majority uh of it is directly people find us but again because a lot of the time the link's broken so after a funeral uh, the funeral directors here in the uk their principal job is to give the ashes back that's what they want to do they want they've got store cupboards full of them of uncollected ashes you know there's i think there's estimated to be a quarter of a million or something just in the uk alone and uh, where they've got store cupboards full of them dating right back from the 70s and 60s you know so they want to give the ashes back so they give the ashes back and then the person's got them and they end up uh in the bedroom they will be under the bed they will be in the wardrobe or closet whatever you want to call it and then they that's when they start to think and so they don't have that necessarily that relationship with the funeral director anymore that that that's kind of gone and so they are left to the internet to find their find the answers and to be fair a lot of the funeral directors they push them towards us and say look you know Scaring Ashes help you out. They'll put you in the right on the right course, you know. All right. So um, then, aside from jumping on Google, um, if clients are listening here, or somebody's sitting at home trying to figure out, you know, what are they going to do? Um, what is the website that they can go to then? So it's it's scattering-ashes.co.uk, and we do supply around. As I say, we supply if we can supply all around the world. We uh, it's just some of the stuff we can't that that requires the ashes so we we you know but a lot of the stuff we can send right around the world so you cover you're pretty much a global reach then really... yeah yeah we send to you know most most countries uh sort of like that have got these sort of same sort of traditions i would say so you know new zealand australia south africa you know that sort of thing and, and scandinavia and things like that so we we export to all of those including canada all right. So if you could uh, if you could leave the audience with something to remember about celebrating a life or choosing a celebration that fits, um, what would that be? Um, time. Take your time. Don't rush. Uh, we have um, families and they they really sometimes they get put pressure on them to do this, that and the other. And they feel rushed into doing or they feel that when the funeral is gone, they've got to deal with the ashes straight away. This isn't the case. And I would say to people, don't rush to decide. Take your time. And you can, unless you're like strict um, Catholic, you can split them. And we get... I, I personally deal with probably a dispute from a family once a week where you've got people saying, oh, dad's ashes is here. My sister won't give them to me. My stepmom won't give them to me. You know, I always say that this this person was never wholly yours in when they're alive. So it, they shouldn't necessarily be wholly yours when they're not there. If you can share some of this and some of the ashes, if that's OK, then it just stops so, so many problems. And, you know, it, 
it's about the person who's gone, not necessarily about your possession of them, if that makes sense. So a bit of time, a bit of thought, a bit of preparation, and you can plan a, a ceremony that doesn't, it doesn't have to involve us. It doesn't have, we don't have to make money out of this. Nobody, else, you know, you can do it for free. You just, just pick your time, your space, and you can make it very memorable. Uh, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't think of putting it that way, but that's uh, very beautiful that you're right. If somebody's, you know, if there's that many people that want to have a part of that person, clearly they have given a, a section of themselves to each one of those individuals while they were still with us. So, you know, it, it does make sense to, you know, maybe spread that individual across the family or, you know, make sure that everybody that had a good connection to them can do what they want to, to do to remember them or to celebrate the life. And it really works. It really does. I mean, some people say, oh, you know, oh, I don't want to give Malcolm's leg away. It's, it's not like this, the concept. It's, it's not. It's about sh sharing and th that person in, as much as you shared them in life, really. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Richard, for coming on today. It's uh, It's been a pleasure of us getting to uh, hear a little bit about your company and the different ways to celebrate a life. My pleasure, guys. My pleasure. To everybody listening at home, thank you once again for listening to Funeral DNA, the podcast where we analyze the unique components, trends, and innovations that make up the funeral industry, or as we call it, Funeral DNA. Bye for now, and stay tuned next week when we'll have a new topic. Thanks.